So I'll stop my screen sharing here and uh, hand the floor over to Martin to talk about the Green School in Cameroon. Yes. Hello, welcome. Uh, hello, everybody. Sorry for the delay. I'm directly in Cameroon in Africa. And the internet sometimes is unpredictable here. So I had to connect now my mobile internet and I can be with you. Yes, um, you saw already a little bit. Uh, my name is Martin Hahn. I have the running the organization uh, Happy Kids. And as you saw, we have a green school in Cameroon, in Africa, which we just started. So the link was to an old presentation where I unfortunately could not show all the pictures, which I wanted to, but now I have the, the new one here. So let's just put me that one. Let me share my screen. And yes, I hope everybody can see the screen now. Uh, the name of the association is based in, in Austria. Uh, it's, it's a Happy Kids Association for Holistic Personality Development and Education of Children. Uh, we have some projects in, in Austria as well. It's many, uh, some book projects and we write children book. And we also work in Cameroon with our Happy Kids Playground, the Green School in Cameroon. Uh, we want to do a school a little bit differently. So it's in our school is more about talents, dreams, about the children and our children. The children need a strong foundation of values which they can build our life on. That's what we, we, we want to build in them. And that's our main focus in our school, that they have a solid foundation of values where they later on when they're grown up can build their life on. And we are here for, for creating an environment and atmosphere where children understand life through lived experience, play and solar naturally and develop their personality and potentials. So let me a little bit share about us, who we are, so about the team. On the left is me. My name is Martin. I'm originally from, from Austria in a small, from a small village there. I grew up there, I schooled there. And as for six, six years ago, I came the first time to, to, to Cameroon as a volunteer and where all things started. So back then I was in a primary school. So, but I started a small project with, with, with a few children where I kept in touch with them over the years. And since four years now, I'm living now here uh, in Cameroon. Um, my base is now, my home base is now here in Cameroon. And to, to the right is my, my wife. Uh, she's since there, since the beginning, we met six years ago. Um, as I was a volunteer and she was supporting me since then. Uh, with the children there to connect us and, and as well with a lot of contact. To the right, unfortunately, I don't have an, a picture. We just started school last week. So our new teacher we got, I didn't uh, take a picture from her yet. So it will be added soon. She will uh, run the school. Yes, and this is our our school, our green school, which we built the last years is one is not only with school different, we also build different. And uh, there we, this building is made out of wood and bamboo and even the roof is uh, with palm leaves. So it's, let me say 98% like that is just nature what we have there. So let me share a little bit about our model, uh, our concept. So our theme is life, business, and leadership. 
in our core values in, in our green school are play and explore is diversity, empowerment, encouragement of the children, is individualization. So every child is unique and is an individual and we really focus on them as, as an individual, not in a general, how we, we know it from, from our schools mainly. So it, it's more in, in individualization. There is safety and security, especially now here we had some difficulties uh, with, with some certain groups and some reverence. So there was some shooting as well. So we will also provide them safety and security. Nature is a really big part, as not only for building, but also for, for our children to learn. The best teacher is the nature. So you learn best from the nature. A lot of many, many things we can learn from, from, from it. And that's, yeah, and as much we, we have time, we, we spend outdoors, not being in that we really learn from the nature. Then we learn through risk and failure. So normally is not allowed to make mistakes in this our normal schools in our society. But here we, we really enforce risk that you take risk and you have some failures because only through failures, through mistakes, you can learn and grow. That's really, really important. And then another big thing is, is giving back. We really, we have some community works where we help um, the, the, this community, the poor community around here, or, but also keeping an eye on the nature. I mean, when you come here, the streets are really dirty with, 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 with plastic, with cans, with everything. So we, we, we want to bring in the mindset in our children that they don't unpack your biscuits or your, your sweets, and then you throw the plastic away into the nature, which is really common here. And even the small children we have in our school, that's natural for them. They, they unpack something and they just throw it out of the window. So we really want to implement them the, the knowledge that is not good, that we throw those things into the nature because the, the nature will suffer from it and that those things will not go away for a long time. So it's also the community work to keep a clean environment what we want to implement in the children. Now let me share some, some pictures. We also have a small garden next to it, which you can see on the right with fancy because they are the goats and also the chicken, they are, they are freely running around here. Also it's a city with around 200,000 uh, people living here. The, the chicken and even the goats, they, they're running freely around and, and now is the time where they already give birth. So there are a lot of small, small goats. Yes, and when we plant something, they are the first one to, to, to eat. Those are new plants. That's why we friends. A small garden is an experimental garden. We see a picture later on as well. Yeah, that's our classroom, our main classroom downstairs even indoors, um, we have mainly all of us room. We have a small computer room as well, room, and for now it's also the playroom where you see toys, but later on we want to um, bring in more, more instruments uh, that are even instruments, music is also really for us that we are not only on the logical side of the brain, that we also use the, the creative mind, this music and also art is really high that every day we do some singing, the, the children do mind. And we have a place upstairs uh, that will be really the, the creative part where the children can draw. And that will be the main playing area, especially for the building blocks we saw down there. Yeah. As I said, we started last week with our school, so we have seven children now, seven to eight. Um, and this, this small video, so finally the, 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 the playground, how we call it, came to life. And, yeah.
Here are some more people. Uh, green school is filled with light. And before we open, the, the, the neighbor children were using it or and, and also the toys so that they could learn it. As well, here is an, another picture of our garden. This one is more for experimenting for the children, um, where we plant things. And then this is next to the garden where we planted some. Uh, I hope it's in English. It's plantain or. It's field uh, next to our school where we can plant more uh, also with the children we want to implement them so we already planted some zucchini and other um, where we can yeah, do some agriculture with the children and also learn from from the nature there but besides uh, our school we also run some other projects um, this is one of the boys I met six years ago as I was a volunteer. And they are now grown up, they are bigger now. They are a lot, they are, their interest lays in a lot in electronics. So I got them some, some uh, electronic devices that they can experiment as well with electronics. Now here is repairing something for me uh, for the TV, which got bad. So the, we're helping them. We also got some animals here. Here we got some rabbits, which they gave birth really soon. Uh, that was a few years ago. Now there are like 20 rabbits, which we sometimes also give out to the children. They build their own rabbit cage back home at their parents' house. And we, we just gave them a rabbit that they can keep care of. We also have some cats now. And soon we will get some, some chicken as well. And we did do some, some, yeah, we go for swimming as well. We, we do some field trips. Here's a, a hotel close in our town where we went with the children or from, from our school away. So at least once a year, we try that we, we go to the beach and also a lot of children, uh, a lot, even a lot of grown-ups, they don't know how to swim, so we can learn them swimming as well, as, and have as well some, some fun, of course, at the beach. This is the school I was a volunteer six years ago. We are still in a, a close relationship and a partnership with them. So we also one project called What's Up. So there was a teacher in Germany who uh, I met and we, we were talking and he came up with the idea, why not connect um, the school he was teaching in, in Germany with, with Cameroon, a school in Cameroon. So we bought some phones for the school in Cameroon. So the, the other children in Germany were allowed to bring their phone for once a, a week in, in the, in they could use it and they were connected through WhatsApp where they were writing, sharing some videos and all those things. So they really learned from it. How is your school in Germany? How is the school in, 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 in they could really benefit from each other? Um, where they could learn from a different, different culture. As I, soon coming to an end, I want to share and maybe can hear some chickens, <laughs> the free running chickens around, but like in Europe, the cases are really, really low, but still the one thing uh, they closed was schools in, in March and in June only those schools open or those classes which are going to the next level, like to, to change the school, uh, either you end like before going to your university, these classes could resume. So we didn't want it to sit. So we went to the children's houses and the parents allow us 
and they could, could teach at their home. So one, twice or a week, our teacher went there and yeah, they were learning at home uh, from it was June to, to August, uh, where we keep the classes at home. So at the end, I just want to share this our school is, is now a small model, you see, it's, it's not really big. And the vision is much, much bigger. Our vision is to have a school here in this town for at least 300 children. And they not only stay in this town, there are a lot of rural environments where they don't have any school at all. So that's our vision to expand, to, to build up more places like this. And also not that the, by time that the, the school system will change a little bit, that is more focused on the children and not only on the knowledge, which we want to uh, try to implement in our children. So the first step is uh, from our first step is that we have our model, which we are running now. We, we also, the parents here, they will get to know our system, how we teach so that we later can buy some land, some big land, where we build more, more, uh, more buildings like this with natural, in a natural way, then we equip the buildings. So we also want to be not dependent on, on these big companies here so that we have our own fountain. We do some work construction to also have our own uh, electric. Uh, so we do some photovoltaic and of course, agriculture is one of the big things we really want to be. Also the, the land here in Cameroon is more than 50% of the income of the people are employed in agriculture. The, the income is coming from, from farming. So that's why it's really important. Uh, at the end, how you can support us. Um, one thing is to be a volunteer here. Unfortunately, the borders are closed now, but if you're interested, uh, attack me. Uh, the website is happy-kids.com. There you find the contact details to they can contact us. We still, there's also an orphanage close to us where the children are coming to our school. Um, most of them, so there's a lot to do here, even for the nature, if you're more interested in the nature part, there are a lot of, there's a big um, mountain behind us with 4,000 square meters, there's a, a, I don't know if it's the English word, but there's a big area which is protected, so a big wilderness area uh, in the mountain, so there's a, there are, I have some contacts there. I know some people who are working there, so that can be easy and volunteer. Then if you like our vision, you can also be an ambassador. You, sure, you share our, our association, you share our vision. If you want to do that, also contact us. Of course, financial support is always welcome. And also you can create some networks. So maybe you know, like, company who can support us um, buy some goods which we can ship here or maybe as well some some financial support from the big company is highly highly welcome so thank you very much for your attention here yes, again the, the the our website happy minus kids.com is the general website and happy kids playground.com is for from that our school project directly. So I think there are three minutes left. So if you have some questions, um, you're highly welcome to ask. Thank you very much, Martin, for your talk about your inspiring educational concepts and what you're doing for the local community in your village in Cameroon. Um, uh, yeah, as Martin said, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask them to him now. Do I see the question somewhere? Um, um, yes, either in the chat or Q&A, but at the minute there aren't any. Okay. Well, looks of it. Okay. But, um, yeah, I have one question for you, for yourself. I just want, could you elaborate a bit more on how you try to connect the kids with nature at a young age? Sorry? Is it, could you elaborate on how you connect the children to nature from a young age? Uh, so I didn't understand the, the first word in, in how we 
bring the children into nature or how do you introduce the children to nature um okay when they're kids and, and we, we, yes we are, as, as i said uh, as many time we have we are, we are out there the children can be by themselves into the nature or especially um one day a week we are we are at our farm so the children can they have their own space uh, at the farm so we are they can plant their own things. They're allowed to use this, uh, their field for their own, whatever they want to plant, they can plant, they experiment on, on, on this field. And then also we have the general area where they're helping us to, to for planting. That's now the main thing we are doing. Um, it's more agriculture now with the nature. Later on, we want to make some field trips as well. As I said, there's a, for the mountain, there's a big area which is protected that we visit them, um, that they also they see that one really life. So maybe we make a small trip inside the forest there uh, with some, some, some guides. So that is how we want to yeah, introduce them. So what do we want to do with them? Brilliant. Thank you very much for your talk this week at the International Wellness Week.